Hey guys, what's up? It's Will Patterson here and welcome to another Illustrator CC tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can vectorize your hand lettering with the pen tool. Now the hand lettering that we're vectorizing today is going to be sort of a new vintage style of text. It's got a lot of curves in it and it's cursive writing but you'll have seen it if you've looked anywhere like on Creative Market or any sort of new Instagram post that I've put out and I'm going to show you how I do it. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to draw something like this out. I'm going to just going to paste in an image to my illustrator like so. Now this is an image of a drawing that I did saying chronology and you can sort of see uh, the bare bones of this. Now this is just the, the writing and the lines. I'm going to be first sh showing you why there's sort of lines coming down like this and then I'm going to be showing you how to vectorize it. So when you start hand lettering, making sure that it's all in the right angle is very important. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and drawn a vertical line at the bottom. Now it isn't actually vertical if you have a look. I'll show you the vertical tool. It's a bit off but uh, if we were to rotate this image just to the right we can rotate it so we can match it up with this guide. The reason why it wants to be vertical is for the pen tool. Uh, or horizontal even, I've been saying it's vertical, but horizontal even is because it's the pen tool that we're using. And you'll see a lot of people using the pen tool in this sort of fashion. So when they start using it, they'll just go anywhere and they'll bring this up like so, they'll bring this in like so, and that can work. That can work for the pen tool, um, but you don't get the best results out of using the pen tool like that. Instead, we're gonna start restricting ourselves. So anyway, so anyway, we're going to go ahead into this project and I'm going to just make sure that all the guides are turned to the exact same way. So I'm going to make sure the vertical and horizontal. I've brought out a vertical guide here, the line in magenta. and I'm going to highlight my image and rotate it. And I'm going to rotate it just up to the left a little bit like so. And I'm going to match it with the first line. And it can be a bit of an eyeballing experience. Now we've matched it with that line, we can go ahead and get rid of that guide if we wanted to. If you really wanted to, we can go ahead and put more guides in, as in like we do another guide. If I can actually pull my guides out, we can put another guide in, and then we can carry on. Uh, and that could help us, but we're not going to do that. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is highlight this image uh, by pressing V, and then we're going to go ahead up to the text layer, and then we're going to double click on that layer, and we're going to go and press template. Make sure that you double click on the right of the actual layer name, otherwise you'll start changing the name of it. And what will happen is when you put it onto template, it will dim the image to 50% and it will lock that layer. So basically you need to create a new layer, but now I can't actually play with it and it's a template for us to draw over. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna go to my pen tool up here to the left, I'll just press P. I'm gonna go to my stroke options and press black and I'm gonna go ahead and put the weight to four and I'm going to go to the stroke options again, making sure it's a round cap and round join. And what this will give us is a nice uh, line for us to work with, like so. We could actually bring this down to about three points, actually. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I mean by horizontal and vertical curves. Now, if I start from here, and if I pull, I can do it in any direction. If I hold shift, it will either lock in certain angles of 45 degrees, I think, yeah, 45 degree angles it will lock into. Now we want to either be horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this bend is vertical like so. Then I'm going to go ahead, actually I'm going to redo that. I'm going to make sure it's here. And I'm going to bring this out a tiny bit to the left. And I've made this bend by just uh, putting another point down and going to the left. Now you see, if I go down here, I'm not going to go in any sort of random direction. I'm actually going to keep horizontal here. Now the reason why we do that is so we restrict ourselves so we don't have the same or more anchor points than we need. The more anchor points you have within using the pen tool, the sort of less clean and smooth it will look. So we're going to stick with this sort of system at the minute. Okay, now if I was to do this and pull this out at the bottom, you'll see that this part isn't actually going over there. Now what we need to do with this is we need to highlight this anchor point here by pressing Alt and Shift and bring this anchor point out to this line here. That might be a bit too far, 
But as you'll see, as we bend this one up now at the bottom, it will follow that path. And it's basically all about getting used to it. Now the problem is with this anchor point here, or this handle, is it's too far across. So I'm going to bring it in a tiny bit and bring it up. Now I've created my first letter form here and it doesn't look the best as of yet. But don't worry about that, we'll fix it later. But as you see, I haven't carried on uh, with the same path. I'm going and creating a new path here. I'm going to get rid of these guides, but you can keep them on if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do the same process. So I'm starting from the top. I haven't pulled anything yet. I've just pressed at the top here. Then I'm going to hold shift, go down, and I'm going to let go. And the way that I let go is, if I just do this again, the way that I let go is by pressing command and then clicking off of that path. Because when you click command, it'll go to the last tool you used, which is the selection tool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press on here, and then I'm going to press up here and go to the right. Now the reason I'm going to the right, again, is to keep it horizontal. And then I'm going to have to pull this one out a tiny bit more and bring this one right as well. It is literally very hard to get your head wrapped around this style of using the pen tool, but you will not regret it. With this letter, I'm going to actually go to the R and I'm going to make sure this R is correct and all in one. Uh, because we can do this now the problem we have here is that we need to go ahead and bring this to the right again but then once we brought to the right hold alt and bring this back and then that will shorten the curve for us and then we're just doing it the same here so you can see i'm holding alt and i'm bringing this down over here i'm going to hold it all again and bring this out a tiny bit more like so then i'm going to hold alt again and bring this out Sometimes you'll see if you play with this too much, you'll lose the path. But don't worry, just hold Alt, hold Shift, and bring one out again, and it'll connect you back to the path. And it's all about precision. Now, there we go. The problem I don't like about this is the fact that it's not as curved as I want it to be. And the great thing is, is that we can edit this and make it nice in the end if we wanted to. Okay, so for the O, we're going to go ahead and use the pen tool again. So for the O, I'm going to go ahead and press on the top part here, and I'm going to pull down vertically uh, and create that vertical curve. Go to the bottom of the O horizontally. I'm going to go up here and pull this out as well. Now, as you notice, the curve's not very great there, so we're going to hold out this part here and bring it out even more. So you can edit this curve a tiny bit. And then with this part, we're going to do the same bit here and create the finished piece here. The great thing is that we don't need to go back to the pen tool if we want to edit these paths. We can just go to the direct selection tool by pressing A and we can sort of edit these points here by holding shift. The main thing you need to realize with the pen tool is that holding shift is something that you need to do. It's, it's, a, it's a given. Okay, so the next thing, we're going to go to the next thing here. I'm going to just bring this down here, up. Then we're going to bring that all the way down there like so. Next path, we're just going to do the exact same thing as we did last time with the N. Apart from I didn't go properly there. And then we'll go like so. And then what we're going to do is copy this O and bring it over to here paste it over here. Now you'll see that if you're not very good at hand lettering and then bringing it in like me, you'll see that sometimes it will go a bit out of place, but don't worry about that, it's all good. Okay, so this one we're gonna go ahead and edit this a tiny bit by bringing a loop up here, like so. Bring this down, round, bring it back in. And it will take time for you to understand this. Now, by no means are these perfect because, like, I haven't what I've been showing you in a video, and it's quite difficult to show you in a video. But um, you can get these perfect curves. It is possible, and I'll show you the cool part at the end, which you can show all your designer friends as well. And the great thing about this word is that there's a bunch of O's. There's like three O's, so it looks bigger than it actually is, and it looks like more work than it actually is. Then the part from the G here. What we can do is press L 
and we can go ahead and just create something like this. And I know it's cheating, but we've done it. And there you go. That's how easy it actually is for the O if you're going to do it that way. Then I'm just going to bring this down here. And I'm going to go ahead and try and do the vertical steps here. Bring this, we need to bring this handle right out because I want the bend to come right out over here. As you can see that it's doing there. And the problem that we're having here is that we can't actually go vertical. So with this one, we need to go ahead and bring this back a tiny bit. And we need to make sure that this path is on an angle this time. But sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes these angles need to be there, um, like so. Just change that because there's a bit of a harsh edge going on here. And we're going to do the same for here. So we just bring this out, bring this down. Oops. Bring this down. Bring this down here. And then with this, let's have it like so. Then I'm going to copy this back over here as well. And what we can do from this point onwards is we can go ahead and clean it up a tiny bit. But the, be the way that I do that is by highlighting everything I've done and bringing the stroke up to about 10. And so we can get it to full size to see what we need to change. So with this one, I need to bring this C in a tiny bit. Um, and then I need to bring all these in a tiny bit. Bring it out. Um, bring this one in. Just bring that out a tiny bit like so. We need to bring all these out. And if you're wondering why like my mouse is acting weird, it's because I'm using a graphics tablet. And I would always suggest you use a graphics tablet. Okay, now that is not picture perfect, but if I hold down over here on my direct selection tool, you'll see that all my curves or the majority of my bends are horizontal and vertical. And this is a really cool thing to have in your portfolio, just an image of having all those sort of curves, horizontal and vertical. Now, by no means am I very good at the pen tool. I am not the best. There are some amazing people for you to follow on Instagram, and I might put the link in the description, or you can check through my followers or my following list on Instagram. And you get some amazing people who are able to do these things in like 20 minutes, and it really uh, freaks me out how fast they do it, but it just takes practice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, that is basically it, and you just, from here, need to go ahead and practice. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's been a bit difficult, but the only thing I can tell you is make sure you hold shift down and that you go for it and you keep, keep practicing. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.